Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I'm documenting my progress of breeding a line of white colored guppies that breed true. This video will be the third and final update on Cross 7. In addition to looking at the color combinations in the males from this brood, I will be picking the females that I will use to start new crosses. My intention is to use one or two of these females to cross with one of the males from Cross 5. As context for those that are new to this channel, my name is Ivan, and we are nearing the end of a series of back crosses with a single male we named Gandalf. Gandalf is our only guppy that had any white color, and he was intentionally crossed to four females that didn't share any of his characteristics. Here is a chart that shows all the crosses so far. Crosses 1 and 7 are the most relevant for this video and the card in the corner will take you to that playlist. In the last Cross 7 video, I talked about how it was strange that our C1B females lacked any red pigments. Keep this in mind, because I think this becomes relevant with some of the phenotypes in this brood. In the last video, I also walked through the eight possible color combinations expected from the offspring between Gandalf and these C1B females. As a review, the base body color is the first of three genes contributing to these eight combinations. This trait splits the brood into blonde-based and gray-based siblings. The second is European Blau, which is largely responsible for splitting the brood between guppies with and without red pigment. The last gene is Storzbach, which splits the brood between guppies with and without a metallic sheen to the body. With the brood split in three ways like this, we reach our eight different phenotypes. Technically, magenta is a fourth gene playing a role here. However, this gene is dominant and all our guppies have at least one copy for it. Therefore, we won't or shouldn't see a physical difference between them. But magenta still has a significant impact on making a guppy appear white. Let's turn our attention to how the males from this brood look today. I went ahead and placed all the males into a small container. I counted a total of 18, which is a rather small number of males. I could wait longer for additional fry drops or for more males to mature, but this project needs to keep moving forward. Waiting won't give me much of an advantage anyway because I already decided to use males from cross 5 for future crosses rather than these cross 7 males. I went ahead and split these males into groups with gray-based or blonde-based body color. Of the 18 males, 7 were blonde-based and 11 were gray-based. So just under 39% of the male brood was gray-based. Because of the smaller sample size, this makes sense. Next, I further separated the guppies into groups expressing European blau or not. Again, any red pigment was the characteristic that helped identify this. Out of the seven blonde-based males, two had some red pigmentation and five didn't. From the 11 gray-based males, six had some red pigmentation and one did not. I also had four male juveniles that were still a little too young, and consequently, I couldn't tell if they had any red pigment or not. The pie chart shows the four different groups so far, plus the four juveniles. Storzbach expression was the last characteristic I used to further split our guppies. Like in the last update on Cross 5, this characteristic was harder to identify accurately, even when looking at the backs of the guppies for elevated iridescence. But I tried my best. The blonde-based red pigmented group of just two individuals had one that looked like it was expressing Storzbach, so this group simply split evenly. The next group I focused on was the five blonde-based, non-red pigmented males. This group had just one male that looked like it was expressing Storzbach compared to the four remaining non-Storzbach expressing males. The gray-based males with red pigmentation split to four Storzbach expressing males and two non-Storzbach expressing males. The last remaining group had just one male and he was clearly expressing Storzbach. We actually didn't have any guppies that were gray-based expressing European blau while also expressing Storzbach. The pie chart shows all eight of these variations labeled by their genotype. B for blonde-based body color, 
R for European Blau, and S for Storzbach. These do not look like they are evenly split, but this is largely due to the small sample size we are working with. This pie chart is quite crowded and might be a bit confusing without taking some time to really study it. So let's just look at each gene and its distribution across our total number of mature males. I will exclude the juveniles and just focus on the 14 males that are mature enough to express all their colors. Revisiting the base body color and only accounting for the 14 males reshuffles the numbers to show seven blonde based and seven gray based males. A straight down the middle split. Nice. Focusing on just European Blau gives us six non-expressing and eight expressing males. This is very close to evenly split again. And finally, when we focus on just Storzbach, we find seven non-expressing versus seven expressing males. Again, an even split right down the middle. This is really neat. In the last video, we predicted these eight color combinations with an even distribution between them all. It does look that way, even if each of the individual eight groups might be skewed heavier to one versus the other. I would like to point out that one of these eight groups should be the vibrant all-white phenotype that I'm after. I have a male that should have all of these characteristics, but he looks more diluted compared to his half-brothers from Cross 5. I'm not sure why he looks more translucent than white, but I imagine it has to do with their C1B mothers not having any red color to them compared to the C1A sisters. However, I would like to note that I also have a male that has all the genes for the all-white phenotype, but with a gray-based body color. He does look closer to the vibrant white, but he also has splotches of black and blues. This is interesting, and although it is hard to tell the genotype of the corresponding females in this brood, I am sure they also carry the same genes that would make them transparent if they were males. Anyway, although I have some interesting males in this brood, I will not be using them for any further crosses. My plan is to use one of the males from cross 5 to pair with a female from this cross 7 brood. So let's turn our attention to the females. This brood has a total of 59 females and juveniles. I'm sure some of the smaller fry could be males, but they are too young for me to be 100% sure. After separating by base body color, I ended up with 30 gray based and 29 blonde based females, very close to the expected 50-50 split. I removed one blonde and two gray females that had deformities. Because I want to solidify a line that produces all white guppies, I'm choosing to use potential females that have a blonde based body color. So I'll be letting go of all 28 healthy grave based females, and I temporarily place them into the same tank housing the females from cross 5. Because these two groups have different body colors, I can easily tell them apart. I am left with 28 healthy blonde based females. The next characteristic that I would try to avoid is any red colored pigments. By avoiding this, I'm trying to ensure that my selected females are expressing the European Blau gene, and therefore I'd have a higher likelihood of offspring expressing the all-white phenotype. Unfortunately, I currently do not have any free tanks to place these females into after separation. So I will cross that bridge when I get there, and these females went back into the same tank as their mothers. This brings up my next point. I haven't shipped live fish before, and I'm willing to try if there is enough interest in purchasing the guppies that I'm setting aside and don't plan to use in my projects. If you are in the US and are interested, please shoot me an email. This would help me greatly by freeing up some tank space to continue with this project. At this point, I am removing the C1B females from their tank and placing them into my mixed guppy community tank to live out the rest of their lives. As mentioned earlier, this is the final update video on this cross. The next time you will see the blonde females will be when I am finalizing my selections to prepare and introduce my next crosses. We are getting closer to achieving my goal for a line that breeds true for an all-white guppy. Not every cross will produce vibrant white males like in cross 5, but this is expected. Yes, this cross produced some translucent white males outside the scope of what my goals are, but this brood carries genetic diversity that I still think is important to have around. I'm looking forward to the next series of breedings where I will be pairing guppies that come from different crosses. 
If this is something that you find interesting, please consider sticking around on the journey and subscribing. The focus of the next video will be the last update on Cross 6. The males in this brood are striking, and the half-black characteristic from their mothers adds a lot of flavor. Here are some update clips on my other crosses. Cross 8 is growing fast, and they are a little over two months old now. I have identified males already, and they are living in their own separate tank. Cross 9 has no fry and is unlikely to have any. The female from Cross 5 that I placed with Gandalf should be dropping fry soon if this was a successful breeding. This will indicate if Gandalf is still viable. Regardless, I am debating placing these C4A females together with the white males from Cross 5. But I am feeling like changing things up a bit from my regular pairings. I happen to still have one of the brothers to the C4A females. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.